The vehicle that's sitting behind me here has taken the world by storm over the past couple of years, and it's one of the most important and disruptive vehicles ever. The vehicle in recent months lost one of its competitive advantages, which I'm gonna go over a little bit later. However, people are still buying them like hotcakes. So we have to ask ourselves an all important question. Do you like sale-proof car reviews? Hello, and welcome to another episode. My name is Tamir, and my YouTube channel is all about car salesmen, car dealerships, the car sales process, and sale-proof car reviews. Behind me is a Tesla Model 3, which is one of the most anticipated, as well as one of the most interesting, cool, and innovative cars of my lifetime. It's all electric, it can practically drive itself, and if you want to upgrade something about it, you don't have to trade in the car, you can simply pay and download the additional feature. When I was a kid, all of these features seemed too futuristic to become a reality, and yet, they're a reality right here. However, in more recent times, Tesla has actually had a couple of challenges facing them, so today, I thought I'd give you a brief history of Tesla sales in the United States, and then we're gonna go on a walk around with the Model 3 behind us here, point out some of its oddities, and then we're gonna ask 10 random people, if they saw this car at a dealership, would it be desirable or would it be sale-proof? Now, Tesla is a relatively new car company. They've only been around for about 10 years versus some of the other manufacturers that I've covered, which have been around for 100 years but their history is absolutely crucial to understand, especially for the Model 3, because if you understand their history, then you'll understand why people are arguing that it's lost its competitive advantage in recent months. So please stay tuned for a brief history. So Tesla came out with their first car, the Roadster, back in 2008, and it wasn't a mass-produced vehicle, nor was it even the first electric vehicle ever produced, but it was arguably the most attractive ever made. Electric vehicles have been produced in small numbers for a very long time, and just within my lifetime, GM had their EV1 vehicle, Mitsubishi had the iMiev, Nissan had the Nissan Leaf, and that's just to name a few examples. When the Tesla came out, it was a huge departure as far as design goes, and with that huge departure also came a huge jump in price, but because of the attractive styling and the long range on the vehicle, people bought in. Now, although a lot of people bought into this vehicle, it was a two-door Roadster, so it wasn't necessarily the most friendly everyday electric vehicle. So that's why we're fast forwarding to 2012 when Tesla started producing arguably their most successful vehicle ever, the Model S. The Model S is a four-door, five-seat, or in some cases, seven-seat liftback that's attractively styled, is of course all electric, and features many different innovations. From the 19-inch touchscreen, to downloadable content, to the fact that you don't need to change the oil ever because there is no oil, to the door handles, to the interior materials, to the very way that you purchase the car directly from Tesla and not from a car dealership. All this and more made the Tesla Model S a completely different experience that was premium and people absolutely had to have it. People that owned S-Class Mercedes, A8s, and 7 Series BMWs previously were dropping those cars fast and converting over to Tesla owners. Now, although these premium customers were very happy with their Model S's, at a price point starting at $52,000 and fully loaded, well over $100,000, the price point didn't really allow the average consumer to even consider owning an electric vehicle that was premium like the Model S was. A couple years later, and with massive success of the Model S, Tesla announced the Tesla Model X, which was a SUV that seated seven people and had more space and also introduced the idea of all-wheel drive capability in Tesla vehicles. Now this was really well received, but the big news came with the vehicle they announced after that, which was the Tesla Model 3. The Model 3 was introduced as a vehicle that was a smaller electric sedan that actually had some of the same innovative features that were in the Model S and Model X, but it started at an affordable price point of $35,000. $35,000. That's the ability to have a luxury electric car that's attractively styled for around the same price as a Nissan Leaf or a Chevy Bolt or a Kia Nero. Was it a big deal? Absolutely. And boy, did pre-order after pre-order after pre-order come in. In fact, they're still coming in to this day. Here's where it gets tricky, however. A lot of people pre-ordered these Model 3s expecting a full load. Little did they know that it was rear-wheel drive, it was the shorter range out of all the range options that were available, it didn't have the fabled autopilot feature, it didn't even have heated seats. And the best part, it had to be black. 
You couldn't even pick the color of the car. Now, some buyers were okay with this, but a majority of them wanted to option out their cars a little bit more, so once they ended up optioning them out, they realized that for a little bit less money, you could actually get a Chevy Bolt that was readily available with almost all of these features instead of having to wait three to four months for your Tesla to arrive. You could even save a little bit more money and opt for a Nissan Leaf, which all you had to do was give up a little bit of range and you would get almost an identically equipped car. It's not to say that the Tesla Model 3 is a bad car, even in its base form. However, it does highlight the fact that the electric vehicle or EV market is heating up and the competition is really fierce and it's getting more and more fierce by the minute. Now let's fast forward to 2019 and the Tesla has lost its competitive advantage with regards to its total cost on two fronts. The first one being the federal rebate and the second one being you can no longer order the $35,000 Tesla Model 3. Let me start by talking about the federal tax credit for electric vehicles because very few people actually understand how it works. If you purchase an electric vehicle, you can actually qualify for up to a $7,500 tax credit. If you have a tax obligation of $8,000, subtract $7,500 of that, and then your tax obligation is only $500. Now let's say your tax obligation is $6,000, then subtract $6,000 since $6,000 is less than $7,500, and you have zero tax obligation. So it's a pretty simple mathematical formula, and if you're in the market for a brand new electric vehicle, since most of them are going to be in the $30,000 to $40,000 price range on the cheap side, more likely than not, you're paying enough taxes to qualify for the full $7,500 if your vehicle qualifies. And that's the next caveat. For an electric vehicle to qualify for the full $7,500 from the federal government, it has to be within one of the first 200,000 electric vehicles that that manufacturer has sold in the United States. Once the manufacturer sells 200,000 electric vehicles for a six month period, the $7,500 tax rebate becomes $3,750, then for six months after that, it becomes $1,875, and then after that, it goes away completely. In Tesla's case, they have sold far more than 200,000 vehicles in the United States, so the Model 3 only qualifies for $3,750, and very shortly, it's only going to qualify for $1,875. As I'm recording this video, the Nissan Leaf still qualifies for the full $7,500, so does the Kia Niro, so does the Kia Soul EV, and quite frankly, there's a lot of different affordable electric vehicle choices that qualify for the full amount. So if you're looking at buying a cheaper Tesla Model 3, it's not gonna save you as much money as those other choices. Now, of course, please don't take this as legal advice. Please consult with a tax professional in order to determine if buying an electric vehicle or a certain maker model of electric vehicle is right for you before you actually sign any paperwork. And then the other big disadvantage with Tesla is you can no longer order a $35,000 Tesla Model 3 and the reason for that is because they actually have been receiving a decreasing amount of orders for a base model Model 3. Customers have realized that they're actually willing to pay for heated seats, they're willing to pay for the autopilot feature, and they're willing to pay for a color other than black. Imagine that. So now all the Tesla Model 3s are going to be coming with the autopilot feature and many other features. However, with this, its base price is jumping from $35,000 to just shy of $40,000, which is a pretty big difference. Besides not being able to qualify for the full federal tax credit and the $5,000 jump in pricing, Tesla is still outselling the other manufacturers by a significant margin. And the reason being is the experience goes far beyond just what you're paying for the car. There's actually a lot of little delightful tidbits about the Tesla that make the ownership experience great. And it continues to be great as Tesla comes up with new oddities for you to download as you hold onto your car for a long time. So what are some of those little finishing touches that Tesla has put in their Model 3 that has the EV buying public screaming, shut up and take my money? First, I wanted to go over the Tesla key card, which is this key card that I'm holding onto right here. When you buy a Tesla, you get a key card instead of a traditional key to actually use to lock and unlock your car right here. And you also use the same key card to start and stop your car as well on the inside. Except the odd thing is when you actually get inside the Model 3's interior, it looks really minimalist and you can't find a card slot or a ignition anywhere. So how do you start the thing? Easy. The way you start it is that same key card you actually place right below the cup holders right here and then you put your foot on the brake and that actually starts the car. Next on our walk around of the Model 3, I wanted to talk about the charge port. And if you take a look on the outside, it's not very obvious where a charge port would normally be. Where it's actually located is actually in the side of the tail light. So make sure your car is unlocked and just tap right here. 
and you'll see your charge port right here where you can plug in and charge your Tesla Model 3 EV. There's a couple of oddities about the charging port that I wanted to talk about, and the first one is actually this little blue light that looks like the Tesla emblem, and that light actually changes depending on if the vehicle is charging or if you have a loose connection or something like that. So it can be either blue, white, green, yellow, or red, depending on the situation. Either way, it's pretty cool that you can effectively have a little disco party by traditionally the most boring part of an electric vehicle, which is the charging port. And the other cool aspect about the charging port is let's say you've unplugged the vehicle because you're done charging with it, or let's say you never intended on opening it in the first place. Well, the charging port will actually close automatically after 30 seconds. Next on our walk around of the Model 3, we have to talk about the gigantic glass panoramic moonroof. Literally, from the windshield all the way to the back trunk, the entire body panel is made of glass. The glass moonroof gives you a lot of natural light and a lot of ambiance on the inside of the car, and normally it's a feature that you find in some more upscale homes. However, the one downside to it is, unfortunately, you can't actually open the roof and get fresh air. It's only a skylight. Either way, it's still a really cool feature, and I wish more cars actually offered it. Next, we're going to move to the trunk of the Tesla Model 3. You have a trunk in the front, and you also have a trunk in the rear, so you essentially get twice the amount of trunk space as you do a normal vehicle, because a normal vehicle is going to have their engine up here, or even other EVs that actually have their battery pack up here. So you get a lot of extra space, which is a huge advantage. However, it does bring up an interesting, I wouldn't say disadvantage, but an interesting happenstance with the car. And the interesting happenstance is this, with other electric vehicles, when you open the hood on the front, you can actually see the battery pack, and most of them actually disclose how many kilowatts, or basically the equivalent of how large the battery pack or engine size equivalent is in that vehicle. Unfortunately, with Tesla, it's never really been disclosed because you can never actually see it in the vehicle, and generally they keep that information under wraps. And the reason they don't share that information is because all of the Model 3s are essentially built exactly the same way hardware-wise, but software-wise, they're actually limited a little bit. So the reason they limit it is if you only want to purchase a base model vehicle, kind of like this one, then you spend less money. But if you wanted to upgrade later on, you don't have to buy it right then and there when you actually purchase it at time of delivery. You can actually download that content later and unlock the car's full potential. So it's understandable why Tesla doesn't want to delve into too specific of the specifics on the hardware behind the Model 3, just so that somebody really smart can hack into it and unlock the full potential without actually paying for it. Now, because the Model 3 is one of the most researched vehicles on the internet, people are already pretty well aware of the minimalist interior that it has. So I'm not going to go over too much about the scroll wheels on the steering wheel, for example, or the gear shifter, things like that. But I would like to point out a couple of really interesting Easter eggs that you can find within the big touchscreen right here. One of them is going to be when you actually open up your menu and you take a look where it says call, you can actually push and hold the call icon. And then instead of saying call, it says ahoy hoy. If you're ever in the mood to ferry the waters in your all electric Tesla. Another cool Easter egg or oddity, as I sometimes call it, is if you go to the other side of the menu, you'll see an icon that says Toy Box. And if you tap on where it says Toy Box, you actually have some games and you have some different modes, including my personal favorite, which is the Romance Mode, which literally shows a crackling fire on the screen, and you can even turn on some romantic music. Take a listen. So the reason you can't order a $35,000 Tesla anymore is they actually added two features to the vehicle that increased the cost quite a bit, but they're really cool and really important features. The first one that I wanted to talk about is the autopilot feature, and that's essentially the car's ability to basically drive itself, you know, with some limitations, but the car can steer, the car can brake, the car can accelerate, the car is even capable of eventually changing lanes for you. So. Effectively, you just set your settings inside the car, and it utilizes eight different cameras that are around the car to act as a separate four sets of eyes for you and drive the car for you, so it makes your commute that much easier. And the other important feature that's also pertaining to those same eight cameras that are around the car is something that Tesla calls Sentry Mode. So if you take a look at the screen, up by your name, you'll see that there's this little profile picture, and you can tap it, and once you tap it, it sets this little red dot, and what that does is that activates Sentry Mode. What that means is once you walk away from the car, 
it'll start recording as somebody else approaches the vehicle. So if somebody's trying to key your car, if they're trying to steal your car, or if they're just generally trying to do any sort of funny business, then it can actually record and send the footage to Tesla. So that way you have a case for your police report that you're following. So even though the Tesla Model 3's base price is just shy of $40,000, you actually get a lot more car than for the price of a more expensive Nissan Leaf or Chevy Bolt that don't even have the full extent of those features in their car. So that explains a huge reason why people are still buying the Model 3 like crazy. You can essentially spend $40,000 for actually a pretty nicely equipped car from the get-go. And if you ever want to upgrade later, you have the option to upgrade later as opposed to needing to buy it straight from the factory right up front. So there you have it. That is a complete walk around of the Tesla Model 3, one of the most innovative cars within my lifetime and probably some of my viewers' lifetimes as well. However, let's ask 10 random people what their thoughts are on the car. Is it something that's still desirable despite the federal tax rebate going away? Or is it now sale proof? Well, it looks like we're off to a pretty good start with this guy who's enthusiastically holding on to a green check mark, and looks like we're two for two so far. And what about the next one? Oh, three for three. Well, it's pretty obvious that the Tesla Model 3 is a pretty cool... Oh, contraire. Oh, double contraire. That's a total of three people that believe the Tesla Model 3 is not a cool vehicle. Now it's almost as if all these other green check marks that are going to come out for the rest of the people that looked at this car even matter. So, wow, I'm truly at a loss for words. I guess 7 out of 10 isn't half bad. It's really hard to believe, but the Tesla Model 3 is not actually the coolest car or the most A car that I've reviewed. A couple of people actually believe it's sale-proof, and the reason they said it, number one was they thought the car was ugly, and number two was they were proud to be burning gasoline. However, what say you? Do you think the Tesla Model 3 is a really cool and innovative car? or do you think it's sale-proof? Please feel free to leave a comment below in my comment section to discuss the Tesla Model 3 further. Do you like sale-proof car reviews? If so, please be sure to click my picture in the corner right over there to subscribe and click the bell notification for a friendly reminder every single week.